Hello there, I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator, and right here is part of the Gundam that I'm currently building. But we're not talking about this today because while this is a cool project and you should subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out, it's gonna be six feet tall. All my printers are currently occupied with printing parts for this Gundam. So what do you do when you have time to kill? Well, you, you partake in the age old tradition of binging YouTube videos. And recently I come across a channel uh, by a chap by the name of Alex Steele. And it's a pretty cool channel, does a lot of blacksmithing and forging. But one of his most recent videos really piqued my interest because he combined 3D printing with forging to make these really cool patterns in steel. Using a 3D printed form along with powdered steel of different types and forging it together, he made his own little doggy into a Damascus pattern. It was really cool, you should subscribe to that channel. But it gave me an idea. And that is why not I try and make some forgings of my own. I have metal, I have a hammer, and I don't have a forge or any other stuff required for blacksmithing. But I do have a bunch of 3D printers, including this Pantheon. Now the Pantheon is a pretty beefcake of a 3D printer. It's all ball screws, it's an industrial design, and it's got a hot end that can get up to 500 degrees Celsius. And the chamber gets pretty hot as well, which means we can print some pretty Gucci material like this uh, Fiberon PPS CF10 from Polymaker quite easily. And this plastic has some pretty cool properties. It, it almost sounds like a ceramic or a metal uh, when you print objects with it. They're very stiff, they're very hard. So instead of using a 3D printer to print a form to make some cool forge stuff out of metal, why don't we just skip the whole forging process and 3D print a knife? How hard could it be? Uh, it turns out it's it's surprisingly easy to, to 3D print a knife. I went into Fusion 360 and quickly sketched up a model of a generic knife. Uh, we went with a 20 degree angle on the blade because uh, that's, I guess, the standard angle for a blade in the Western world. Uh, Japanese knives are 15 degrees angle, something like a meat cleaver is 25 degree angle. I figure we'll go split the difference, go with 20 degrees and voila. Now, the downside is because we are 3D printing this, we are stacking layers on layers which means we're only gonna have a single bevel edge. I'm not gonna try printing with supports on this. We're just gonna try and print it, take it off the machine and slice and dice with it. That's right, we are not going to cheat. It would be very easy to just print something that looks like a knife, sharpen it and cut something. Uh, I believe there's a YouTube channel already where a, a gentleman makes everything into knives. I think he even made a chocolate knife. But the thing is, that's cheating because you can take something and sharpen it and make a knife out of it. We don't wanna do that. We just wanna 3D print a knife. So we're gonna to have to play around with some settings to see if we can even get this to work. So now let's get to actually testing our four knives here. So I've printed four different knives, different settings. I'll go through each one as we test. And uh, they're all printed with pretty much the same settings except for layer height. They're all printed with 330 degree temperature on the nozzle. They are printed with a 90 degree bed. PEI bed, um, although there is some differences there. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so essentially they're all printed out of the same material with the same temperature. The big difference is layer height. Because it is a 20 degree angle for the blade, uh, the thinking is the more refined, uh, the smaller your step size, the smaller your layer height, the more sharp the knife should be. Instead of a sharp staircase, you'll have a very smooth gradual slope. That's the thinking and hopefully uh, with the smaller first layer, we're gonna have a finer point. Again, no sharpening to these. These all came straight off of the printer. So the first one we're gonna start with is generic 0.2 layer height. And this knife I have the least amount of hope for simply for the fact that uh, I also printed this with the textured PI bed on my Pantheon, which is the the bed I prefer on most of my 3D printers, but unfortunately that is a textured surface, which means we're probably not gonna get the sharpest edge and uh, I don't have high hopes for that. So again, we're starting with 0.2 layer height. And how are we testing our blades? Well, only the most stringent and accurate of knife testing regiments we'll be using. Piece of paper, some cardboard, and a tomato. Let's get started. While the blade is the freshest, 
I guess we'll do the paper test. Uh, that's the most generic test. Uh, you've seen knife people test with paper. I've never actually done this before, so... Um... Yeah, it, it, it's not cutting. Um, cardboard? Ah. We're getting a bit of a cut, although it's more of a... Uh... Yeah, that's... It's cutting, but it ain't that good. Now, what about the tomato? Well, first, let's see if it can get through the bag. Ooh. We have defeated thin plastic. And uh, for those wondering at home, these are Tomato on the Vine Walmart brand, greenhouse grown. And will it cut a tomato? Oh, we're, we're sawing, we're sawing. Oh, that is juicy. Now, here's the thing. Can we cut another thin slice? Oh, no. No. Yeah. I mean, if, if your reference is a, a, a wooden knife from McDonald's, um, I would say it's a little bit better than that. But uh, the point two, yeah, I don't think uh, I'm going to be adding this to my kitchen. How do I not have any paper towels? I did not plan ahead. So point two is a no-go, but what about our next one up? This is point one layer height, and this is printed with a flat PI bed. So we should have a sharper edge and we should have a finer slope. And again, also with that point one layer height, the first layer, the very tip of the point should be the sharper than a point two. Now, why didn't we print this vertically? Quite simply, um, Printing this vertically would have been a nightmare. Yeah, we probably could have got a double beveled knife out of that, but unfortunately the actual cutting edge would be only as sharp as your nozzle diameter. Uh, you can go like 0.1 millimeter, which we have 0.1 millimeter, but also the big problem is uh, layer adhesion. This would be a very weak blade. At least this one is pretty strong when we print it in this orientation. So let's see how 0.1 millimeter cuts, again, with a flat bottom. So again, uh, we'll start with the, the paper test. And, oh, I, we can sort of start cutting paper. That's better than the point two. Cardboard. Feels about the same as the point two. And again, we're mostly sawing. Actually, I think the point two might do a little bit better with the cardboard because it's uh, with the rougher finish because of the textured PI, it's more of a saw on cardboard. Now let's see how it fares with the tomato. Actually, we might be dulling the blade already. I think on the next one, we'll do the tomato before the cardboard with point one with the tomato. Yeah, ah, actually, that ain't too bad, but I got a feeling, oh, Oh no, we're mushing it, we're mushing it. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, point one, nah. We must go smaller. So what's less than point one? What about point oh five? Again, printed on the, ooh, poked myself there. That's actually, tip's a little pointy. Uh, so again, printed on the flat PI, point oh five layer height now and uh we'll start with the tomato and then we'll move on to the other stuff see how this fares get ourselves a nice juicy tomato and we'll start with this hopefully the blade is still sharp again this is straight off the printer 0 0.05 millimeter oh wow that's not bad now the second cut this is where all the oh Well, I'll be, I mean, this isn't no scalpel, but I, I would say compared to some of the other plastic cutlery I've used over the years, um, it's comparable to a really good plastic knife. Maybe, um, if I was on the beach and uh, I forgot to bring knives to cut stuff up for my barbecue and all I had was my Positron, 
Uh, I would set that up and maybe printing some knives would be a, a valid option here for that barbecue. Of course, microplastics aside, but let's be honest, most of us are probably swimming with them by now. But yeah, that actually cuts up our tomato pretty well. You do have to do a little bit of sawing action. But in a pinch, that works. It's better than a, a wooden knife, that's for sure. But let's see how it fares with the paper. Eh, eh. Again, I've never actually done the paper test on a knife before. Uh, so I don't know the, the proper way to do it. If there's like a, but it, yeah, it's, it's not cutting the paper. And the cardboard. Yeah. I think the problem is, while this plastic is really stiff, the moment you come up against something, even with a little bit of resistance, like even the paper, but definitely the cardboard, you just roll that edge and you lose any sharpness you had. Um, this PPS CF10, it's a very hard plastic, but I think at that, such a small amount of it at that 0.05 layer height, it's so thin, it's just curling right over. 0 0.02 millimeters. Um, now I never actually changed the top and bottom layer settings. Uh, so with a 0 0.02 millimeter uh, layer height with eight top and bottom layers, um, this is all walls and infill. There is no top or bottom layers to this. Um, and unfortunately, this blade was actually damaged. In fact, I tried printing this three different times and each time while removing it off of the bed, uh, a little bit of the very edge layer was left behind. Um, it's just so thin, it just chipped away. I'll show you here in the close up. Uh, but this is 0.02, so the question is, even with the damage, with that fine of a layer height, will this cut a tomato? Well, let's find out. We'll try and cut it with an area that's not damaged and we'll see how it goes. So let's get going. You could feel where the blade is sharper. It, it's sharper out near the edge here where there's less damage from moving it off the bed, but it does cut. Now, granted, tomatoes aren't the most uh, structurally sound fruit, but they were the cheapest one at Walmart. And what about the point? How's the point? The point is pointy. So yeah, that is tomatoes. What about paper? Yeah, we're tearing the paper. We're not cutting and cardboard. You know what? Let's go for broke. Actually, no. Yeah. And that edge is gone. That edge is gone. So uh, there you have it. At the end of the day, if you're at the beach and you forgot to bring utensils and all you brought was your Positron or a um, any other 3D printer that can print this material, because um, of course your, your Positron is modified to have a hot end over 300 degrees Celsius, um, in a pinch, yeah, you, you can 3D print some knives to cut your tomatoes for those delicious uh, beachside burgers. But um, let's be honest, you're probably better off bringing some knives from home. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, this was a little bit of an impromptu video inspired by some late night YouTube binging and uh, a random idea that popped in my head. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more random content like this, or you just want to follow along while we build a giant Gundam, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you want to help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do, don't forget to like the smash button on the way out. Again, I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator, and um, this was a video. Cheers. <laughs>